Welcome, welcome, welcome to 39 Uncensored Everything Southwest Florida and beyond. And we have a very, very special podcast today. We have Wayne Smith, and most of you guys that live in Collier County know Wayne. He goes to almost every function. Wayne, you're you're all <laughs> over the place. And today is a very special day because today is Flag Day. It is that. And we have Wayne here who has a great story to tell, Wayne. And, and I'm honored to be here to interview in this podcast, interview you in this podcast. We, we've got an amazing man that lives right here in Collier County. And I know Wayne is probably going to be sitting there going, <laughs> I don't say, you know, say these things. But uh, Wayne Smith, what, what do you think about coming in the, the studio today? What's Well, this is a new, new one on me. I'll tell you, I've never been in front of TV like this, <laughs> but you have quite an, quite an operation here. I'm looking forward to it. Wayne, it's, it's an honor. And a little bit about Wayne. Wayne is an Air Force veteran. Wayne was uh, a POW, and we're going to talk a lot about that, for over 1,800 days, five years, two months. And right. we're going to talk about those days and a little bit about, you know, what transpired. Um, give us a little bit about you, Wayne. Just, uh, you know, you, how long have you been in Naples? Oh, gosh. Long time, really. <laughs> <laughs> a long, a long Seems long. like it now. I think yeah. it's over 10 years now, for sure. But... Uh... It's been probably been longer than that, but I was 55 when I was able to retire from my businesses after I got out of the Air Force. I'll talk about that. But so then I came to, after retiring at age 55, I'll be 80 in two weeks. Oh, you look great. <laughs> I can only hope so to I've be like here, Wayne. You know, for a long time and uh, really enjoyed living here, but uh, it's been, uh, it's been great. I, I honestly, gosh, the more I stay here and course travel other places i realize what a heaven this is it really is yeah you know wayne that's great and then being retired at 55 uh, and i know you worked hard to get there right oh yeah uh you know <laughs> it, it doesn't come easy I, I was lucky i was able to retire at 54 uh -huh. um, right at 54 and um you know from law enforcement i did 31 years here at the sheriff's office i did my time uh, -huh. uh in the u.s military four years in the u.s air force but let's go back to okay. when you when you signed up for the Air Force. And we're going to talk about your your POW days. Tell us what was going on in the country and, and give us the year and, and you know how things how you ended up jumping on <laughs> into the military. Okay. Well, that is a really shock to everybody that I did that. But uh I'll go back a little bit further than that. Uh I was born in a Little town of Richmond, Kentucky, of all places. Okay. I still have a little bit of that accent. A little bit. And uh, and my my mother had left my father when I was two, so I never knew him. And uh, then I was pretty much raised by my grandparents, my grandfather and grandmother. And my mother was working at Bluegrass Ordnance Depot, which was near. Uh, where we lived, but it's a long way around to get to it. But that there, when they were, when she was there, uh, they were storing the nuclear waste from World War II. And that's why they called it Bluegrass Ordnance Depot. Okay. Unfortunately, that uh, took her in and several others who were with her, but uh, it was a cancer that got to her. It also got to my sister too. It was my only sister. And so I was raised by my grandparents who were not affected by it, but they weren't really going into the, in and out of that plant like the rest of us were. So I was very fortunate. I didn't get any kind of uh, effects of, of the bluegrass. So. Um, but anyhow, I was able to uh, later move to Richmond, Kentucky. I, I would, actually, I should say I went through a great school. Uh, because of my mother's death and everything, they let me go to Eastern Kentucky State Teachers College. Okay. But I was there as a guinea pig for the teachers. There were 30 of us in, in the classroom. And I was there from grades one through seven. Okay. And it was a wonderful opportunity. Uh, while my sister was there, uh, she was taking dancing lessons after school. And I was taking piano lessons, of all things. And became a fairly accomplished. I heard you. Yeah, of all yeah. things. <laughs> and, and we got to mention Crazy. Lois, right? Lois oh, yeah. Bowen. She, oh, you you guys God. are everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we, we love Lois, and you guys are uh, just the fixtures yeah. in the community. 
but anyway, as a result, uh, I had pretty good grades and uh, and it had my piano. And, but I was told that there was an opportunity to go to one of these academies, the military academies. And uh, as it turned out, I had a pretty good grade point average. It, well, it was over 98 point something. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Wait, that's good. <laughs> but as it turned out, I thought I was number one in my class, but Lois told me that I was really number two in class. <laughs> But as a result, I was able to get an appointment to the Air Force Academy. And I was very fortunate there because I didn't know how I was going to get through, scrape through college. And uh, so Senator Thruston Morton was the one who, who nominated me and they put me in there. And so yeah, Senator, I, yeah. Senator has to get you through. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. or a uh, referral. Yes, right, right. Uh-huh. And uh, they're appointed. And I was very fortunate to, to uh, have that opportunity. And at the time, the Air Force Academy was almost new. In fact, I was in the seventh graduating class. Wow. I graduated in there in '65. So that's, you started up. It, you yeah. started up like '61. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it worked out really well for me. I had an opportunity to uh, uh, play in the athletic department. So, what was, sports uh, did you uh, do? Well, football and the basketball. But uh, basketball was my uh, uh, forte. Interestingly enough, we were the best defensive team in the country. No kidding. Can you believe Air that? Force. But those days they didn't have a stat, didn't have a time clock. Right. You could just, <laughs> you could just right So here. we just held the ball. Yeah, we were so ball. small compared yeah. to going against like, you know, Sundor or those kind of guys. Yeah, it's always amazing like how the Air Force <laughs> Academy folks can compete because they're super smart, right? That's, so, well, so, maybe. <laughs> yeah, super super smart and they they're able in football and all yeah. the all those athletics. So yeah, division one. Yeah. So yeah. But we Usually, as small as we were in those days, now uh, uh, they got big, taller guys because sure. the cockpits are bigger. Yeah. yeah. So you know, when we were literally had to be, had small to be small to get in there. Yeah. Get in, yeah. Well, yeah. Was there was there actually back then? Was there like a height? Uh, if you were over a certain height, you couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't there, go in. The, when the I plane. was there, yeah. they were worried about you. You're you know getting popped getting into out of the an thing, airplane. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So. But that's no longer a big issue. They got big airplanes. Cut now. your legs off. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Air Force, great. Yeah. So when you were in the Air Force Academy, you graduated. Where, where did you go? And I mean, when mm-hmm. you're in the Air Force Academy, you got flight time there. You- we had a little bit, of, and and then this. It's interestingly enough, we we didn't have any vacation time in the summer. Right. We we were there almost year round. We had maybe two or three weeks off to go see our homes and whatever. And then we were back in there and, the, and the, uh, but during the summer, you would have a lot of different types of, uh, outdoor activity. I mean, we had to learn how to hike for goodness, right. for instance, in the mountains, Survival. we had to learn how to swim mm-hmm. in the ocean. And so we were pretty active during summer months doing that sort of type of thing. We weren't in classrooms because our, our, uh, instructors had to, take a little time off <laughs> yeah so, so let's progress along a little bit as far as you had training right yes. as far as flight training right. at the air force academy what mm-hmm. types of planes did they have like the t- well we, t- we had or way we had, before that we actually at the air force academy didn't do a lot of flying right we had a little indoctrination to flying and but uh, when you uh, take an opportunity you suggest what, what do you want to do when you get out and we said oh i'd like to fly and 90% of us did. What was that process? I mean, could you, you obviously had to go through yeah. a, a, a vetting process that determined whether or not right. you were capable to do that. Well, first of all, you, you from your credit and how bad your grades were, for instance, you get to, your pick. So if you want to go to airplanes, you've got to want one, they have to check you out first to see if you're in pretty good shape. But usually they don't really know that until you go to the first couple of weeks of pilot training. And one of the things they did was pretty smart is they allow you to have 12 hours of, of uh, instruction in a, in a, like a 70, uh, 172. Okay. Cessna 172. And they give you 12 hours in that and to find out if you could fly or you know, have an aptitude. Actually, they try to find out if you can hold your, 
<laughs> your stomach. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which is true. And some people can't. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Some so people, yeah. after 12 hours, they figured they got all that. Care. And I was telling you, when I was in the Air Force, I got the opportunity and was oh, Air, yeah. Air, Airman of the Month, right? So I got to go up oh, in F-16 yeah. in a D model oh, there you in go. the back. It was like being strapped on a number two pencil uh -huh. and going. And, and, of course, those pilots, they really, they talk to each other before you go up. And they say, let's see if we can make this yeah. airman sick. Uh -huh. And that's like their goal. Oh, yeah. And I was holding it in. I'll tell you what, it wasn't easy, but I was I didn't I didn't get sick. Oh yeah. 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 So you did so you did the training and then yeah. you got out of the Air Force Academy. Where did you what was your next assignment? And we'll yeah, move have, on to yeah. where you Yeah, I went actually to pilot did. training at Moody Air Force okay, Base. Moody, and then yeah. I went through several other uh, airplanes. And then I uh, was in pretty good shape with respect to order of merit and all that kind of thing where whatever plane I was taking, but, uh, I wanted to go in fighters. Some guys had to go into, you know, tankers. Right. <laughs> so, and it was by order of merit and you had to be able to be up in your class in pilot training. So I was pretty fortunate and I uh, was lucky to get, uh, not only an F4, oh. but I was in an F4, D, the brand new model. The reason I had a D was because it was used for the walleye missile. Okay. And there were only four airplanes that used the walleye missile. So uh, it was pretty, it was pretty good shape to, to have an opportunity to get in, into that aircraft. Yeah. And I, I used to see those F4s and they used to yeah. take off. And I mean, it was, that thing is like, that thing is like <laughs> a fortress, right? When oh, you're flying man, yeah. and, and you can, you're going to tell some stories, I'm sure. But those things used to smoke and take off. Oh, yeah. Maybe take it but man, what an airplane. Well, they, you know, a lot of people didn't like that black smoke. You right, know, it's really right. funny how people said, gosh, look at that stuff. But uh, hey, it pushed you. Oh, it did. It pushed yeah. you. Thank and goodness. It had, a, it had two big engines on it. Yeah. Two big, uh, yeah. And uh, it, they, you hit the afterburner and it made a lot of noise too. <laughs> Tell me about your, do you remember your first flight that you went by yourself in an F4 and oh, returned my. back? Tell me about that. Oh, gosh. Uh, that was pretty, you know, it's kind of hard to remember now that you mentioned it, but I'll tell you, <laughs> it was exciting. And just to do that now, we had uh, soloed in several other aircraft, but nothing like the F-4. But, I mean, gosh, we could do Mach 2.4 out of those things. Do you yeah. ever get like, because I remember the first time I got my driver's license, yeah. right? And I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. going to drive by myself. Uh -huh. You get that plane. Do you ever like just go, let's go see what it will do? <laughs> wait, I'm, wait, it's, I'm not going to say. Wait, it's over. You can say what you want now <laughs> oh, at this point. I know, but true. Yeah, it is. Just burn up a little bit of gas. Yeah, but uh, uh, fuel, I don't, I don't want to be a plate for him to follow. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you don't want to be that. Does it? But um, yeah, so t tell us a little bit about that F four and and mm -hmm. how. You know, it's it's kind of like I guess when you when you have like a favorite car, yeah. right? And you drive it and you appreciate it, yeah. and it's it's probably saved your life. That aircraft, you actually get that feeling with that aircraft. Oh yeah, yeah, you do. And it's a really a loud aircraft. A lot of people don't realize once you hit those afterburners, you you have to wear ear tags if you're near the runway even. And so it's really a, got a lot of thrust on it, and. Uh, but it's a big airplane. It carries a lot of stuff. We carry a doc atomic weapons on it, plus, right. plus you know, all kinds of missiles. And uh, we had the big gun. That gun, I forget, what? forget, it was a Gatling gun. 20 mil? What? 20 millimeter. 20 mil, right. yeah, yeah, we used to load those 20 mils. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those yeah. things. And uh, they have explosive warheads in them. Yeah. So if you hit anything, it's going to blow it up. Yeah. Of all things. And you could fire 1,200 rounds a minute. Wow. So is that right? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, for some reason, it sticks in my head at 1,200 <laughs> knots or 1,200 uh, uh, rounds. Well, anyway, it's it's fully loaded for sure, and it's a big airplane. You know, you yeah. have to climb up a big ladder to get inside the darn thing, and uh, so it's uh, quite a quite an quite an animal. They, now they've got them even more bigger and you know faster. So yeah, I bet they're easier to fly now, though, because I bet when you yeah. when you get in an F four. I, and I, I'm not taking anything yeah. away from the current pilots, but you know everything's digital. That was how how much how much of that F four was like manual. I mean, was it like it, did it yeah. take some some did, when you go on a flight on F four and you go on a mission, depending on how long it right. is. What what did you feel like when you came back? Well, I was tired. Number one, and me, I'll tell you why. 
because I'm flying out of Ubon, Thailand, and I'm going right to the center. I'm going to Hanoi, for instance, right, or right. right up on the China border. That's a long way to go. So we've got, tanker, we got tankers taking us up and tankers coming us back. Wow. And if we're out there for 20 minutes, we're out of, out of fuel. Wow. I mean, we have to be at the tanker because we're an afterburner doing, you know, like I say, more than twice the speed of sound. So it's uh, quite a job when you've got afterburner going for 20 minutes or so. Does that thing heat up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a silly question. Well, yeah, it's pretty warm, but it's fit, it's outfitted for, you know, yeah. that kind of use. So. All right, let's take it. Let's take it into, you know, when you're in war, in battle, uh -huh. because I've never really. You know, I've talked to a lot of pilots. I've mm -hmm. you know been around. I've been exposed to the Air Force myself being in, yeah. loaded a lot of mm -hmm. F-16s. We had F-16s, a lot lighter, you know, just a lot different. When you get a mission and they all bring you in for a briefing yep. and you guys walk out to your aircraft and mm -hmm. you get up in that aircraft. Right. That's the real game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, people talk about, you know, these... NFL players being heroes and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and to some extent they're good people, right? We're not saying right. anything bad, but real hero gets in that F four mm -hmm. climbs up that ladder. Give us that experience. Well, you've had a lot of experience first of all, before they put you in combat. And in fact, I was at Eglin air force base, uh, North Florida. Yeah. yeah. Uh, checking out in that aircraft because I'd gone through pilot training at Moody Air Force Base right. in, in Mississippi. That's, yeah, but anyway, the uh, so you're pretty well acclimated to high speeds and whatnot. But the the F four was even faster than anything I'd been in. The T thirty eight was a very fast airplane. We could do one point five Mach, and those are thing. light, right? Yeah, they're a little light, <laughs> and, and they're training them. Yep, those little training, training thing, yeah. little white thing, you know. Yeah. At the time now they're different, of course, but uh, that was a lot of fun too. You could do a lot of things with that, and uh, one of the things you had to be careful out in the states is you you, you have to keep careful that you didn't you know hit. Uh, more than speed, speed right. of sound, Crash right? low windows. level or something. But you, <laughs> <laughs> you could kill a lot of cows running across <laughs> the <laughs> pasture. Yeah. They'll be laying yeah. down. Yeah. But, you know, it's you have to be careful. Yeah. You know. So when you get, so when you have a brief in case okay, so you have a yeah. mission, let's yes. go, let's go over to, you, you said you, a lot of times you took off out of Thailand for, for, oh, yeah. For, for, oh, for, that's for where I was. Right? I was in Ubon, Thailand. <laughs> so you have a mission and they all get yeah. you together and say, hey, guys yeah. this is what we're doing this yeah. is what we got going now one of the things that i should mention is i only flew out of thailand and i only flew over north vietnam right well never that's, flew down to south vietnam well, that's pretty so that you know we amazing. that's what we did and we never you know got near south vietnam but uh anyhow we could come back over land or over sea either way to come back and hit the tanker because we hit the tankers just as soon as we go in and and uh, I mean, we get off the tanker, but we would come uh, uh, back on the tankers as soon as we came out. So we could use up that whole aircraft in a half just, hour. Yeah. Just trailing it. Oh, yeah. So when you go, when you get your mission, you go, you, you get it, and then you fly over. Have you had air to air? combat with the other aircraft mostly or oh, was yeah. it mostly yes, air to we ground we no we'd done oh a little bit of both all right not, yeah we we did that we, we combination bombed, we sometimes bombed bridges right great time to you know stop a traffic because we would go after the doomer bridge almost three times a, a, <laughs> a, let it go. a, a, a week and uh and that was pretty heavily defended too they would have such black smoke up there it's a wonder they didn't kill us all but uh somehow we could fly through them and jink and all that kind of stuff but uh and then 37 57 white stuff was a little lower okay but that 85 millimeter could go up to thirty thousand feet if you're up that high wow so they knew we wouldn't go that high but yeah you had to get up pretty high just to keep uh leaning your gas so now when you, we know, obviously when you got shot down uh -huh. prior to getting shot down, did you get shot at and get hit and have to get your aircraft back to base? Or was it when, a, when you got shot 
the first time yeah. you went down or how did that all go? Yeah. Well, a couple of stories, maybe a little bit. About yeah. That. I got hit. It's pretty early to see. And they, you know, grabbed a chase plane to see how badly it was damaged and all that. But uh, I knew it was in pretty bad shape. One engine was, had two and a half aircraft lengths long of flame coming out of it. Wow. And the other one was ready to go too, but it, it was still running. <laughs> did you actually bring it into the, you brought it into the, back to the airfield oh no 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 and that's what you went no that's i was going to go down. back over land they said you, you can't make it when you got to go over water and then they had all the destroyers they, they must have had 10 ships out there waiting for me in uh, 15 minutes they were all parked up there waiting for, waiting for me um, to um, jump out and the plane um it, what happened was i was going to try to make the water okay and make it simpler unfortunately the plane decided to dive straight down and I was already losing altitude, you know, going slow in a one engine, barely moving. And uh, I knew it was going to be tough to get to the even to the ships. And sure enough, the plane just all of a sudden did its own thing and went straight toward the earth. And I and don't you punched. Oh, I had to punch then and there. And then within seconds, I'm in a tree hanging in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> that quick. Yeah. And that, unfortunately, there was a village nearby that coastline and uh now is this the, is this the incident you were taking as a pow yeah, yeah. okay oh, yeah. okay yeah i was this only shot incident. i only shot down once, okay so, all right yeah, yeah. but some guys, some guys some guys made it back two or three times actually. that's what i was wondering yeah. i was like well so now you punched out yep you got shot down punched out right and next thing you know you're in a tree yep hanging in and tree. then you have an idea where you're at but you probably your bearings yeah, were probably I knew, like, I knew it was close. You was not close. in good shape, though. No, I, and I hoped that I could, you know, make it somehow. And it, this was an afternoon thing, and I thought, well, maybe I could hide and something like that and then use the darkness to get out toward the, the, uh, the coast. Because uh, I could see the coastline right, you know, in front of me almost really? three miles away. Really? Yeah, yeah. And that plane just decided to go on its own and went straight down. So the the – Ships were out there waiting for you to try to bring it down into the water. You couldn't make it back to the right. water. You went right. down, yeah. boom. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're in a tree. This is North Vietnam. Yes. What approximate area? Uh, Do you remember? Oh, yeah. It was up in the same latitude as Hanoi. Okay. Okay. Right pretty, there. But pretty yeah. close because that's where I was. Yeah, that's where you. And, and I just went straight east. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to go yeah, east Directions, that way. <laughs> yeah. So tell us what happened. Go. So you were in the tree. And did you make it down to the no, tree? No, I was in a near, you almost must have been. near a village, as it turned out. Okay. And it didn't take much time at all before they had me captured. They were on me like ants. Each pull, pulling on my trip, my flight suit and everything else. And they, <laughs> then they hit, then they hit, they, there would be a truck coming down this dirt road. And I could hear it. They bust blindfolded and all that. And my hands right. behind the back of the thing. And then they... That's true hero right here. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know you don't want to be told that, but man, you yeah. were, unbelievable. But anyway, the truck started coming down the, the uh, this dusty road and everything, and then they, they would take me and throw me in a ditch and go, shh, do like that. And you had no idea. What I had no idea. What, what the hell going on? Well, uh, they were... I found out later, much later, uh, from another POW, he, I said, what was that after I was, after a couple of weeks of trying to get out of this problem I went in and a lot of bad torture and stuff on the beginning of yeah, that phase because yeah. they wanted to beat you to death almost and then think they could get information from you. So anyhow, uh, when I was thrown in a cell and I learned the tap code, we, you know, had to figure out how to get in communication with somebody else because I was in solitary confinement for months and uh anyhow they uh guy told me he said oh you didn't know this he said there's a price on your head those people would I yeah guess. they they would actually uh they would hide me and and tell me to sh 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 be so quiet. nobody else would get so you. nobody again they jump on top of me and tell me to be quiet and then the, the other people would come we call them gooks but anyway they put them they'd come by and uh and they'd hide me, and then they'd pick me up and take me on. I found out later that there's a price on my head, and if they went to the right authorities, they would get paid for it. Wow. And they would kill each other 
in order to take me away from them so they would get the money. Right. So the, mean, there must, the word must have been out. If oh, yeah. these If these Americans come down or this happens, yeah. then you bring somebody, That's then you right. get your money. That's exactly you right. You get your money. Yep. Wow. So how how was that? How Do you remember the the time like that? So you were in the tree, you come down, you were taken to obviously a POW camp, yes. uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Was it a long ways away from where the it obviously it took a couple of days to get there on walking. And walking. then they put me then they finally and put me in a no, truck. You have no idea. You were blindfolded the whole time. Yeah. I was blindfolded for the, the whole time. Did you hear any English at all? Mm, not till I got into Hanoi that I okay. recall. Okay. Yeah. So, I think that's true because you know, they finally uh got me and then <laughs> they wouldn't let other even the guards talk to us in right. English. They had to had the right people to to do it yeah hope i'm not taking too much of your time no there. you never I, i'm just like fascinated by this this is fascinating yeah. and, and and again when i say fascinated i just it really is amazing that and i and i look across the table here that you know what somebody can endure mm -hmm. for their country you know and their flag and everything that goes with it you know being in the military myself it, yeah. you know you feel like that's what you got to do, right? Yeah. You know, but I never was in a situation like that. So walk me in the, from the maybe, obviously, we have to, mm -hmm. you know, you were there for five years, two months. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of things happen. Probably have to go through all, each one of those, yeah. and I don't want to do that. But yeah. um, what is what is it like when you, the first couple days, and then what what is the most difficult part, or what was the most difficult part for you mm -hmm. from day one throughout? Did, I mean, does it ever get any better? Or? Yeah, it, there were periods where it would get better. Okay. I'll tell you why. Well, you know, if you go through that and you're in solitary and you hear tapping on the wall and you have to find it. He said, Gee, what's that? And finally a guy yelled through me. Then they put me about every one day into what we call the bathhouse, which was, <laughs> it had, and they already had POWs there. So they only put you at one end of the thing, and then about eight stalls up, they put another guy. So they only put two guys in this thing, but they used to have a, a whole path thing. And I hate to describe that thing, <laughs> what it yeah, was. Yeah, because I'm sure. I started to climb in this tub-like thing. Uh-uh. There was another little thing that you had to take your cup out of and use that finite little finite supply and throw it over yourself. To get a little, well, you only get it once a, once a week. Wow! Then to get the blood grime off of you and stuff. So anyway, uh, that was a whole different idea of taking a shower. Yeah, really. yeah. <laughs> but we found a way to yell down the drain. The guy yelled, "Hey, new guy, tap code five rows, five columns. The C and the K are the same." So what? <laughs> the C and the, well, we only needed twenty five letters. Right. Five rows, five columns. An A the was C a 1-1, one, one, a B was a 1-2, and a, a C was a 1-3. A C and a K are the same. Right. So you're going to need 25 letters. Then you go to the end of it. So that worked. But then we found so many other different ways to use that uh, that issue there. So we could use that tap code and whatnot. By the way, I found a way, being youngest in the camp, uh, they would ask me to pick up our – I call it SHIT camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I did was find a way to talk with my hands. And it, we had the same code with our hands. Five rows, five columns. The C and the K are the same. So an A would be a one. A B is a one, two. One, two. One, three is a C and a K. And then you could go to four, five, and you get to Z. So anyhow, we, we used a way to, to do our hands. Finally, I found a way to even use our hands to show like my name would be w right. a y n e so i found a different way to to use almost like hands. a sign language yeah it was quicker thing. yeah right <laughs> so, like, yeah let's just do this <laughs> instead of, yeah so, but, but then it's got to be visual though right if oh, you're yeah, doing that so visual, you'd be like walking by really be, quick. if you're walking by thing you're going to be peeking peeking out this little thing and then we had to sometimes squilch you know make little marks to get the thing so you could see through it because it was a little little it was about the square of a two inch by three inch and they would lift it up and down and peek in so the door the whole door was closed it was just 
dark, you know. Yeah. They had a little light bulb, empty light bulb. So what was it like? What was it like temperature wise? It was yeah. Really hot. Humans. Really hot. Just humans. like you yeah. can imagine, very, right? Very yeah. dead sometimes. Very dead. Yeah. So and you and you obviously had did you have when you were there, did you know that guys were coming, leaving? passing away yeah i mean did you did you kind of know i mean you kind you kind of yes. get like a row right yeah of, once we got uh communication with one another that we were able to pass that that stuff down and we would always listen to hear what the senior ranking officer in that particular camp was passing down yeah. so yeah so what if, if you if you blurted out something they'd just come in and just beat you down or yeah that could happen. It could happen. Yeah. yeah you wouldn't want to take Sometimes a chance. Sometimes that did happen. Too. Yeah. And, and something that I learned, um, you had John McCain yep. next to you. Yes. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. He was, a, he was shot down the day before I was, by the way, they put everybody. Senator John McCain. Yeah. In case you know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they put everybody. Well, when, when I got there, there were people there years and they hadn't done it this way, but they decided to put us in order of shoot down. And the reason for that was they didn't want the old guys to find out what's going on in the world. I got it. And they knew we had some communication. And so they were very careful about, and the senior ranking officers, they knew we went by their order of merit. Uh, they were, in, they weren't just uh, solo. They were in solitary confinement. They weren't near anybody else. So, but with me, like, for instance, in various camps, the youngest guy would take care of all the bad stuff. I mean, you know, the, and so I found so many different ways to communicate, to get to those fellows, because I would empty their, yeah. I would, I mean, simple and the, the simplest thing was take the thing and I would take the inside of the, the lids and mark on them because they're all gunky. Yeah. Right. And so I could switch lids and I could write a letter to them, things like that. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So we had to be. Yeah. Smart. So yeah, five years. And then let's talk a little bit about, did you ever feel that you were going to be there and you were going to not make it out? No, for some reason you we all figured that there's got to be a courage, way to do right? that. But then they had the two year layoff and they stopped bombing for two years. And we said, yeah, oh, it's quiet. We know we thought maybe that I have to so it's over. Yeah. But it was because of the Paris peace talks. It went on for, like I say, about two years. And we were, and then finally, rumble, rumble, rumble. We said, what the hell is that? B 52. Oh. Man, the whole, the whole earth shook right. when they came over. Right. And they were pinpoint bombing and they bombed the heck out of them. They did a whole dense place, even though it's about, it's all, uh, it's not wooden, <laughs> right. they used nothing but stone. And uh, so it didn't burn everything down, but uh, it uh, made a big difference to them. You know? how, how did you keep your s mental capacity, your health? I mean, you could, mm -hmm. you had limited probably food, yeah. water. I mean, how did yeah. you do that for five years? Well. Uh, the best you could, <laughs> right? I mean, you it's survived. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, we survived on it. But, you know, the, the winter months, uh, <laughs> we ended up with uh, – what we call sewer greens and uh it was just i didn't know what it was but they would take you know water boiled water and they would pour pig fat in it and some pig rinds and cook that stuff up as a broth and so we would eat that twice a day nine o'clock in the morning and five o'clock at night and uh and then sometimes we get a piece of a little piece of bread with it especially in the summer months and uh, that helped. Uh, and then we carried a little jug of water and we'd get our water every once a day and take it back to our, our stalls, each one at a time, you know, kind of thing. So uh, that worked. And then uh, then we had sewer greens, like we call it. Yeah. <laughs> just, it was just what? beet, pig fat stuff. And then, of course, well, that was pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, in summer months was pumpkin soup, we call it, but it, didn't look like pumpkin soup. I don't know what it tasted like either, but it, it was the same pig fat and poured grease in it and it poured up a pumpkin thing, but it didn't taste like pumpkin. But we had that twice a day. Kept us alive. Yeah, no, absolutely. What was it, your thought? Like, I mean, I'm sure there were times that you were thinking your family, 
What oh, about yeah. people? Did you know people are they gonna come or I mean yeah, knowing that you're an American, a true patriot, and you're still like that today, you knew <laughs> eventually it was gonna come. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that when you started the very first time that you were like, We're gonna get out of this place. Did it come that quick? Well, yeah, hard to I just can't remember when that happened until the bombs came for sure. The, so when the B fifty two when they first start yeah. when it stopped. We said, well, maybe the war's ended, you know, and then it just kind of for two years didn't and everything. So, and then we still heard two this, years. Think about that. Two yeah. years. Amazing. I was Paris peace talks, they call yeah. it. And uh, so we didn't really get the grid and they didn't want us to, to know that there was anything going on in the talks sure. and stuff. And sure. so they kept it pretty quiet. So they even put a, They even put a squawk box in there, though. And you know why they put that ending in it? So that they could pipe Jane Fonda's talk to the men in the South. Yeah. Go home. Go home. Don't, you know, it was unbelievable. So we don't have a lot of love for No Jane love for Fonda. Jane, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what gets really gets me really fired oh, up right God. now. That's a whole nother day, right? Oh, I'm just saying to myself, are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, I get frustrated at people today. We, you know, we are, we, you know, obviously we can go on a whole tangent of that about, you know, you, yeah. you put, you put something, you put somebody uncomfortable for a day or two nowadays and it's the world's ended. It and I think about way. you for, you know, five <laughs> years too much. And I know when you're doing it, you're, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things yeah. that you just, it's, it's, the mind is amazing how it can work for you. And, yeah. and hopefully with a positive attitude, you can, you can get through it. Let me ask you, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say when they did come over, they decided, oh gosh, we got to take care of them. They took us up to the the uh, Chinese border and took us all out of there. And we were up there for I don't know six months or eight months or something like that. And, and this is when you guys were freed up. No, this is oh no, this we is... were up in on China border, and they didn't want us in. Oh, they didn't want they you down they in, coming after and, us. Yeah, off with the and then they bombings. took us back I got down and put. But then they put us in big groups. And like a big gymnasium for one place. And they parked us in there. And there was no room for us to put our rice mats except in the middle of the floor. And we would walk all the way around that gym kind of thing. But at that point, you guys could, yeah, you could we, run into we each other. Together, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of all things, we all, what we did all day long was teach each other things. Some people taught each other how to play bridge. Right. And all those different things you could right. do. Just to keep bridge. your mind working. I didn't get, and the rest of us would have classrooms set up. And we could teach each other languages. I mean, you can't believe it. And one of my best friends, Guy Gruder, so good man, also Air Force Academy. He had had uh, so much uh, knowledge in math, and math calculus. is big. <laughs> He taught me how to solve the surface area of a soap bubble using calculus of variations. Oh my God. Can you believe that? <laughs> You're like, because he went, how am I going to apply he left, this? He one? left the Air Force Academy and went straight to, to brilliant. To brilliant. Went to, uh, I forget what university he went to. I think of it, man. But big math school, you know, and learned how to do yeah. all that because of, uh, couldn't believe it. Calculus of variations, it's called. Oof. Amazing. Yeah, you're, that's like some heavy duty stuff there. <laughs> but I even taught out. German. I had two years of German. Yeah. I had five years of Latin, though, because in high school, there's a little girl I liked who liked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I speak a klein bisschen Deutsch. Initial <laughs> yeah. fear. For my couple years in Germany, yeah. I speak yeah. a little German. And then yeah. uh, my daughter's mom, German, she passed away a couple years ago. But, uh, um, but the, let me ask you this. Sure. The, let, Let's go on to the day you you were free. Okay. Could you believe it? Yeah, we were worried about it because they took us out in groups. And the reason they did that was just to make sure it's going the way we wanted to. So, But the one thing that we did, and somehow we got the word out somehow, is we will be released in order of shoot down. And the reason for that was, is there were... Uh, well, the war was still kind of going on. It was sort of stopped. And so our uh, people that were, you know, taking care of us said, well, uh, we'll let some people go free. And right out of the group, 
they let three people go. No, uh, any kind of no rhyme or reason for nothing. And then, oh, three or four months later, then three more went. And then our senior ranking officer passed the word down with tap code. No one leaves unless in order of shoot down. And so everybody said, yeah, it's a good idea. Wow. Because we had guys that were coming out that had been there for a year or two, and others had been there seven years. So that was the game. And uh, we all agreed. And there was only one case, though. We had one 18-year-old fellow. <laughs> Bless his soul. I won't mention his name in case a lot of people get this word. But Doug is last name, first name, Doug. But Doug was an 18-year-old seaman, and he fell off a destroyer. He fell off and got scooped he, up. You know, you know that <laughs> book with the guy that Benny uh, took yeah. that boat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, he did the same thing. He, he moved in uh, six days, was it seven days? Six days, I think, to, to, to go 12 miles swimming. And he was a strong swimmer. Had to goodness. be. Thank goodness. Made it to shore. They captured him. And he, uh, it was funny. He said he wasn't captured. He wasn't uh, captured. He was saved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine after it. being in the water. But, one. Yeah, but uh, they put him back in. in the yeah. thing. And Dave, he'd been there for a long time. He had a lot of duties because he was out and running around. He was seven, 18 years old. But they, he, he didn't want to leave, but they took him okay. to the heart. And the senior guy said, if he may goes, that man goes. You know, da, da, da. And uh, But he waited until he had everybody's name, everybody's father, everybody's mother, and their kids' names even. He had every way to get to them and let them know that they were okay. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, that's amazing that someone could do that. So let's go ahead and move forward. We get a couple more minutes left. But, okay. Um, you get released. You come back to the United States immediately, or you get in. And what what is what is that must have been? <coughs> yeah, we a had to very be, difficult yeah. situation. Debrief for you know, just yeah. I mean, just being able to assimilate back into society must have been like amazing. And you probably didn't even yeah. it didn't feel real probably to you. Yeah, while they were uh, getting we were getting debriefed, they they were really there to see if we're okay. We're not right. going to bring any diseases right. back to the states and things like that which was really really important we all agreed that thing do so we didn't see our loved ones or anything until uh then they flew us to all our various ports you know right. so to speak and uh, i was living in florida you know at the time so that's where i headed off to <laughs> what was that like the first year after you mm -hmm. arrived back to florida i don't know i i think i was you think, uh, still back to normal. You quickly, think it was pretty quickly? quickly. Yeah. yeah, pretty quickly. I don't know why. Yeah, I did because uh, your mind was able to do yeah. your, your your faith. And now you you went on to um, regular business world. Yes, I did. And I got out of a lot of guys stayed in forever. And, right. Uh, and so, I, in fact, I just to interrupt real quick. About three or four weeks ago, we had our fiftieth reunion being released I, I saw that on facebook yeah, yeah, yeah. lois god bless and, her put oh, it on we were out in california yeah, that was yeah. so, I, had, I wish they'd done it in naples so i would uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, california yeah. Yeah. i had to deal with that for a couple of weeks oh, but, yeah. Lordy. Yeah. so anyhow that uh we you know had a good time getting together and all that stuff Great. what's that like uh i know you had a relationship with with uh senator mccain you told me uh -huh. that you guys talked yeah. over the years and how did those conversations go good yeah yeah, of course he wasn't with us anymore. Right, you know? yeah. right, yeah. But yeah, uh, no, not on this last one for yeah, sure. Yeah. But previously, oh, yeah. right? Oh, absolutely. Previously years, sure. yeah. We yeah. all did. Yeah. We all. In fact, this last time we were together, uh, it was, you know, just like old times. The, really. Just yeah, and it's um, amazing the yeah. stories you guys must have had. Yeah, and, and 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 it's really not fair to even try to ask what went on. Number one, and and not really fair to anybody to say that they can imagine what something. Like that's like, but yeah. you guys have that bond. Yeah, it'll always be that bond, and it's probably a bond that'll could never be duplicated. You know, yeah. The, yeah. it's just not that you ever want it to be, but just yeah. you guys can look at each other and look in the eyes and say, 
yeah, we, we, we went through some stuff yeah. and, and we're here today. Well, Wayne, thank you so much for coming on this <laughs> podcast. God bless you. And, uh, you know, like I said, just, just being in your presence and, you know, talking a little bit about this story. And, um, I know talking to Lois and everybody in our community, they're just so proud of you. And we're so happy that you're here and, uh, you mean so much to everybody and you have such a great energy when you talk <laughs> and just being around you is, is unbelievable. <laughs> Well, thank you. I know you, you I know, know you can't, I, I know it's yeah. harder for you. Probably to take it is, yeah. It's, I, yeah. I wasn't really prepared like I normally am for, a, uh, yeah. you know, because I used to give talks all around yeah. because I thought it might give people a lift. But this is a great experience, you know, and it is a lift. <laughs> I mean, and, and if nothing else, it, it, it gives people just a little insight of what, you know, yeah. the true, a true hero is. And I know you, you you probably like when you hear that you're probably like yeah i've yeah. heard that before but it yeah. truly means a lot to me and i'm sure everybody listening is the same way yeah well thank you so much for your well, service i hope i didn't bore you too much no <laughs> not at all all right 239 uncensored everything southwest florida and beyond and thank you wayne wayne smith great guy legend living here in naples if you get a chance to see him out and about make sure you go up and, and talk to wayne we love you. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. All right. We do a little fist pump in oh, the middle. Yeah, yeah Wayne. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>